this will be an instructional video on the basics of how to use your calculator to do hypothesis testing when you're dealing with more than one population. So for the problems where we just were dealing with one population, we would do a z-test or a t-test. So we would use that when, for example, we're looking at women's heights, in which case the population would be women. If you're studying two populations, such as, for example, the population of women versus the population of men, then we have a couple of different options. So if you're making an inference about a population, about two populations, where the data is paired in some way, So if it's paired data, then you do a t-test on the differences. So let's go over to our calculator to um, exemplify how to do this. Well, on your calculator, if you want to do a t-test on the differences, of course you go to stat and on test you're going to choose the t-test. Now of course the t-test is going to pull data from your list one, that's the default setting. So you want to be sure that you have all of your differences in list one and list two and list three we're not going to use for this particular test. Remember that you can calculate those differences by hand, or if you prefer, you can actually let your calculator do the differences. So for example, if you needed to do 19 minus 7, you could just enter it in right there, or 14 minus 3, and it just shows up already subtracted. So then once you have all the differences listed in list one, you go over to test, you choose the t-test. And again, if you're pulling raw data, you have data highlighted, and you fill in all the appropriate information carefully, and then you have to choose the correct type of test. Whether you have a two-tailed, a left-tailed, or a right-tailed test. Go down to calculate and get your information. So just like any t-test, you have two options here. You can do the traditional method, in which case you would um, compare the test statistic with a critical value that you'd get from a chart. Or you can look at the p-value and compare it with alpha. That would be the p-value method. Notice here that this p-value is not equal to 2.5. p-value is a probability and takes values between 0 and 1. It's not possible for it to be 2.5. But you may not have noticed this e part. That means times 10 to the negative 5. This is actually a very small p-value. So in this case, this p-value would be less than any standard alpha value. And when the p is low, the null must go. So this would be a situation where we would reject h naught. If you have two populations, and the data is actually independent, that's when you do a two-sample t-test. To tell the difference between dependent and independent, well, let's say, for example, you were studying the difference between the heights of husbands and wives. That would be an example of a dependent set, because the two are paired in the sense that they're husband and wife. If you're looking at the population of men and women and you just had a completely disjoint group of women and a completely disjoint group of men, then that would be an example of independent data. 
When you have independent data, you do the two sample t test. So let's discuss how to do that in the calculator. Well, in the calculator, if you wanted to do the two sample t test, what you'll do is you'll go to stat, again, scroll over to test, and the two sample t test is right there, it's number four. So you choose the two sample t test, and it's pulling data, in this case from list one and list two. You don't want to find the differences of the data when you have independent case. Okay, so again, you'll enter one of the sets in list one, another set in list two. You do not subtract them or anything like that, just enter them in straight asses. Then you choose the appropriate test. If you're making an infer inference about the true means of the population just not being the same, that's this test. If your um, H1 is that the true mean of the population 1 is less than the true mean of the population 2, that's this test. And you choose this test for vice versa. If your true mean of population 1 is greater than true mean of population 2. Go down to calculate. And then one way to solve this would be to look at the p-value. That would be the p-value method. And if the p is low, the null must go. If the p is high, the null will fly. Well, this p is 0.49. That's going to be bigger than any of our standard alphas, whether they be 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. It's bigger than all of them. So this would be a case where you fail to reject h naught. All right. So that's what you do if you have two populations. Now what if you are making an inference about three or more populations? That's when you do the ANOVA test. So you know that if you have more than two populations, you do an ANOVA test. So let's review how to do an ANOVA test on your calculator. To do an ANOVA test, you go to STAT, you go to EDIT, and you have three different populations. Enter the data for population 1 in list 1, enter the data for population 2 in list 2, and enter the data for population 3 in list 3. Once you do that, you go to STAT, over to TEST, and you scroll down to the ANOVA test. Okay, Because it's at the bottom of the list, it's actually faster if you scroll up to it rather than down. But either way, you choose the ANOVA and it actually sends you back to your basic screen on the calculator. The goal is to enter ANOVA with your three list Oops. And close the parentheses. You must have commas in between the list. L1, L2, and L3 you can find right here on your calculator. L1 is above the number 1, L2 is above the number 2, and L3 is above the number 3. The comma is located right here, right above number 7. You can press enter to get the stuff that you need. And again, you could choose to do a p-value method. If the p is low, the null must go. If the p is high, the null will fly. And that'll give you everything that you need to complete your test. So that's it.